Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Unity of Kent Sunday Service for March 13th, 2022. My name is Reverend Patty Becker, and I am the spiritual leader for Unity of Kent, and it's my delight to be with you this morning. Our worship assistant is Leo O'Neill, and we are so blessed to have our returning musicians, Becky Thatcher and Matt Corey. So Becky and Matt, would you please open our service with a fabulous song? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Thank you for level setting expectations. Yeah. <laughs> it is a fabulous song by our friend Becca Palms called God Is I Am. That's a perfect song to um, enter into our service today. So thank you so much. And once again, uh, good morning and welcome. I'm so glad that you've chosen to be with us this morning. Uh, Unity of Kent is an open and welcoming congregation, and it is our pleasure uh, to invite people of all ages, creeds, colors, lifestyles to come and be with us, uh, not only on a Sunday morning, uh, but um, to uh, take advantage of a full range of what we have to offer uh, as a spiritual community. We believe that everyone should have a spiritual home uh, where they can feel encouraged to not only explore uh, their own spirituality, but to develop, to develop their gifts. And um, I'm so glad that you have made Unity of Kent uh, yours. We come together every Sunday to... Um, build our faith, to heal, and uh, to learn how to be greater expressions of love in the world. We also believe in each person's spiritual authority, and that means that we honor each one's uh, intuition and wisdom, uh, trusting their own inner, inner guidance to know for them what is true for them. Uh, we also support the application of spiritual principles to uh, to our lives, knowing that the more and more um, clearly and soundly we can apply spiritual principle to our lives, uh, the more good we experience, the more peace, the more joy, the more well-being, and the more wholeness we experience. So as Matt and Becky opened our service with song, it is my pleasure right now uh, to open our service with a short prayer. And I was really inspired by uh, the music this morning already. 
um, that God is all there is, that we are one with God. Uh, so as you let that enter into your consciousness in a fuller and deeper way, I would invite you to close your eyes so as to minimize distraction so that you could truly concentrate on that statement that God is all there is and I am one with God. Together as spiritual community, we breathe into this beautiful idea. Letting go of stress or concerns and allowing our attention to come fully to this moment, to this time in our lives during this service. I know and affirm that each one of us is here by divine appointment, not by accident. And that today, something in our service has an offering for you, a particular and personal offering of realization, of an aha, of a connection, whether that be through music, through word, through meditation, that this gift is meant as a blessing for you. And so open your heart right now in this moment to receive this blessing to let go of any obstruction that would cause you to reject it or not to be aware of it. We gather as spiritual community this morning to avail ourselves of truth, of light, of direction. And that we know for ourselves and for the world that we are all blessed for as God is, and I am one with God, there is nothing beyond my reach, comprehension, or application. And so I apply myself now to the transformative effects of spiritual truth. And so it is. Amen. 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 So we've got an uh, old unity standard, um, but I would like you to take a moment, put yourself on gallery view so you can see each other's, all of each other's faces, and uh, join along um, as you uh, feel comfortable. In the midst of the people, God said, it doesn't take very many, it can be just two or three, there's a holy hush around us, I see glory on each face, surely the presence of God's love is in this place. Matt and Becky. It's always so much fun. It's such a pleasure 
to have you with us. Good morning, everyone, on this sunny daylight savings day. I have a little daylight savings uh, info for you. Winston Churchill said, an extra yawn one morning in the springtime, an extra snooze one night in the autumn is all that we ask in return for dazzling gifts. We borrow an hour one night in April. We pay it back with golden interest five months later. And daylight saving time, the only, is, only the government would believe that you cut off the top of a blanket, sew it to the bottom and have a longer blanket. Um, so on Wednesday, you can be a fair talk with Patty for a lovely conversation, a lively and lovely conversation. And next Saturday, March 19th, we will be doing the second round of painting the sanctuary. It'll begin at 9 a.m. So uh, if you can be there for a few hours or all day, whatever uh, time you can give would be greatly appreciated. There will be coffee in the morning and lunch will be served. And who knows, Dorothy might stop by with cupcakes or donuts. She did yesterday and nobody was there. So hopefully she'll freeze those cupcakes and bring them next Saturday. So the virtue today is creativity. Creativity is the power of imagination. It is discovering your own special talent. Dare to see things in new ways and find different ways to solve problems. With your creativity, you can bring something new to the world that is unique and innovative. And the affirmations, I have creativity. I see things in new ways. I have a great imagination. My thinking is fresh and original. And now Patty will read the daily word. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, yes, I would um, love to read the daily word. And um, if you could just hang on for a minute, I'll, I'll, have, I'll explain later. Something very interesting happens with Zoom, and that is um, that um, I have uh, the order of service up on uh, on Word on my screen, and when we go to the um, to the slideshow, uh, I didn't realize it, but I can't access that, so I needed to get my daily work. Probably more information than you needed. Anyway, today's daily word is light. The light of truth dissolves all darkness. A bird's cheerful song interrupts the quiet of the night. The dark sky grows lighter and puffy clouds begin to glow with a beautiful shade of pink. Brilliant rays announce the sun's arrival. The sun peeks over the horizon, flooding the new day with light. Light dissolves darkness in my consciousness in a similar way. At a challenging time, my heart responds to the hopeful thought that this too shall pass. Hope grows into faith as my mind opens to divine wisdom that is always mine to claim. Guided by the dawning light of the truth, I see the way forward and follow it with confidence. As surely as each new day brings a sunrise, my faith assures me the light of truth will dissolve the darkness of any obstacle I may face. And our scripture today comes from John chapter 1, verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And um, <clears throat> so now is the time in our service when we entertain our prayer requests. So as usual, if you have a prayer request, um, I would invite you to uh, unmute yourself and speak it out loud in just a minute. If you have need of personal prayer uh, with me today, I invite you to go to our special prayer room after the service and uh, Eric will put that up in the chat 
uh, the address and how to get there. All the prayers that um, are prayer requests that we get uh, are written down and go into our prayer box and they accumulate over the month uh, being prayed over. And then they are sent at the end of the month to silent unity where they are prayed over for another 30 days. So there's lots of attention that are put onto your prayer requests. If you would rather send a request anonymous, anonymously or, or personally to me uh, over chat, you can do that by addressing it to me. Um, so I'm going to open it up now. Is there anyone here this morning who have a prayer request? I do. Okay. This is Debbie. So I I think you might remember when we had that movie about that um, guy finding his, I think his birth mother. Anyway, I am searching for my birth father. I The records are open in Oregon and I'm filling out the application today and sending it in. So I'm hoping that I find him and find out if I have siblings or what's going on in life. But anyway, I'm really excited about this room and it's very emotional. Um, and then also, um, I got bit by something that's made me really nauseated. I don't know if it was a spider or what, but I haven't been feeling well. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, I'm very excited for you on the possibility of making those connections, those personal connections in your life. I um, think you remember how emotional I got after that movie. Yeah, I think so. Yes, I do remember, as a matter of fact. Yeah, you sat with me for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else have a prayer request? I have a prayer request that uh, for ongoing uh, support and um, uh, prayers for the people of Ukraine in their uh, struggle to maintain their freedom. Hi, Patty. Good morning, Hi. everyone. This is Lilna. Hi. Hi, Lilna. I was on the phone when you said that, when you asked, so it took me a minute. Hi. Hope everyone is okay. It's good to see faces. Um, I would like a prayer request for our family and Robert's family. Uh, we lost our nephew last week. And um, they need support. We all probably do. <laughs> I'm so sorry for your loss. And of course, you have our spiritual support for that, for uh, peace, comfort, and, um, and guidance as you move through this uh, process of loss. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, You're everyone. Welcome. Any others? Okay, so why don't we go back to our, um, our attitude of prayer, um, closing the eyes and bringing these, um, these heartfelt desires uh, into our own hearts, uh, knowing for, for each person, each family, uh, the guidance of spirit, the comfort of, of faith uh, that we all share together. And I go back to our statement of faith that there is one presence and one power active in the universe and in our lives. This presence and power we know, believe to be absolute good. It is a presence and power that not only surrounds ourselves, but is the heart and, and core of all of our loved ones' lives. That it is present and active in all situations and circumstances, whether personal or universal. It is a presence and power that knows no obstacles, that is always shining forth and making available prosperity, guidance, wisdom. It is through this presence and power that we, we experience our intuition through which we make decisions and choices in which we set direction. This is a presence and power that offers strength, 
prosperity and replete with creativity. And it is this presence and power that we acknowledge and realize now as the true reality of our lives. We release ourselves to this presence and power, knowing that its influence is true and always, always, always for our highest and best. And so with the confidence of our faith, we let go and we let God be God, be the energy of transformation in our lives and the lives of our loved ones, in the situations of the world and the circumstances that we all face every day. And so it is, amen. There is just one presence, just one light Shining in the world like a beacon in the night There is just one power we all can share Thank you. Thank you. I'm all jazzed up now. And before I was so serious going into this talk, I was thinking, hmm, I have a lot of serious things to say. And you just uh, made it all uh, pretty upbeat. So thanks. Um, it's great to be with you all today. Um, and oftentimes in the sanctuary, when we're in the church, I just take a moment before I jump into what I might be sharing with you just to take a look around and to make a connection uh, with you. That's that's harder uh, to do via uh, Zoom, but I do want to do that anyway. I'm going to try it out um, in this um, in this setting. So I'm just going to take a moment and just to connect uh, with every one of you that I see in gallery. And as I do so. Uh, I want to tell you that I am filled with appreciation uh, for each one of you. And for those that have a square with just their name in it, uh, it's no less of a connection. 
that it's a pleasure for me to be in your company uh, within our church community. Thank you. Hmm. Most of us here this morning grew up in one of the 200 Christian denominations uh, in the United States. And astoundingly, uh, there's an estimated 45,000 branches of Christianity uh, worldwide. If you're like me and did grow up uh, within one of those uh, denominations of Christianity, uh, we, were, uh, we came to believe uh, that God has a divine adversary. And the name of this adversary uh, is the devil or Satan. Satan uh, plays a prominent role uh, within Christianity. And uh, this is the force um, that is believed to be evil, uh, a divine being or energy that uh, is less powerful than God, but uh, has an energy of its own and puts quite a lot of effort into drawing humanity away from God. Interestingly enough, it was the Christian missionaries who came to the British Isles that put a face, um, uh, the most familiar face uh, to the devil that we know, which is uh, part uh, a horned uh, goat and uh, a person's body. So it's kind of a, a combination of a person and, um, and an animal uh, with big horns. And uh, this was um, modeled after the uh, Celtic god of Cernanos. Um, he's the, the god of nature. Um, and so as was Christianity's habit, especially in the, uh, uh, the um, conversion tactics uh, in uh, pagan lands, uh, was to adopt their own deities and to demonize them. Uh, and then to replace them uh, with that of uh, Jesus and, uh, and God, as the Christians knew uh, that force to be. So the devil, or Satan, is that force of evil um, that we were taught has a lot of influence in our lives as we were growing up in our decision making. Uh, probably the most uh, common visual of that would be the the conscience you know the angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other shoulder because of the <clears throat> supposed presence of this malevolent being um, humanity must be on constant alert of its influence and seductive seductive nature that satan is wily and subtle and uh, has the power in and of itself Satan, as a matter of fact, can be so powerful that sometimes um, we fall into belief that we aren't wholly responsible uh, for our actions. I remember um, the television show in the 70s called Laugh-In. Some of you may have watched it. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, but the running joke within that program was whenever somebody did something wrong, the refrain was, the devil made me do it. As a former Catholic <clears throat> coming to New Thought, I was confronted with the many ideas that took me a while to adjust uh, to this new way of thinking. Needless to say, one of those ideas was the absence of a divine negative energy, uh, a divine force that had individualized power in the world and in my life. The statement that there's only one power and one presence in the universe and in my life, and that this power was absolute good, and that this power is what we call a God, uh, actually blew my mind. Uh, it raised many questions for me, and it took me a long time to get my head around it. There was a part of me that recognized this to be true, and another part that asked, well, if this is true, um, how could it be true? If, because if there's no separate being of negative and malicious intent, well, then where does evil come from? Uh, where does suffering come from? Uh, how can good people be rewarded and bad people be punished? Uh, you mean there's no place of heaven and there no, there's no actual place of hell? 
And as a youngster growing up, I, you know, heaven was a great carrot uh, to my behavior. I wanted to go to heaven. I wanted to go to that place of eternal bliss. And the image of hell was a great deterrent. Um, <clears throat> who wanted to go there? Um, because uh, evil, uh, the devil, hell, uh, provided a place and a person or a, a direction uh, in which I could blame uh, something outside of myself when I fell short. The idea of one presence and one, po one power was both challenging and it was, it was comforting too. As I grew in spiritual understanding and awareness, I realized that new thought and unity teachings affirming the oneness of God uh, is not unique. Um, also, my study of world religions uh, made this very clear to me. Within Christianity, it is a radical concept, <clears throat> but in the realm of world religions, it has many counterparts. Judaism affirms that God is one without opposition or adversary. Uh, this is reflected in their own statement of faith called the Shema. Uh, and the Shema goes, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And in Hebrew, it's Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echod. Islam also recognizes the oneness of God. God in Islam is singular and complete. Though there may be other gods worshipped in the world, they are inferior and inauthentic to the true God, to Allah. And this conviction is firmly stated in Islam's own declaration of faith called the um, Shahada. The Shahada is the first of the five pillars of Islam and avows La ilaha illallah. There is no God but God. I, Muhammad, is the prophet of God. Every Sunday in every unity church, we declare our own belief that there is one presence and one power active in the universe and in our lives. And once again, that this presence and power we call God, although it can be called many names, God is good, absolute good, and God is omnipotence. It has all power. This statement rejects that there is a separate divine power of evil in the world. And yet, and yet, evil exists. Evil, the word evil, and um, I thought this was ever so clever, uh, is to live, is the word live backwards. So evil is to live out of integrity with our divine natures. Evil is what we experience when we lose sight of our true relationship with God or whatever your name for God may be. When we live in forgetfulness, in this kind of separation, we suffer. When we live in forgetfulness as a species, the world and everything in it suffers. The true and complete experience of living in the goodness of our divine reality is thwarted by ignorance and choice, whether on the global or individual level. Our awareness gives us the information and our choices set the direction. Whatever direction we choose to go becomes our experience. When we live outside the truth of our spiritual reality, we become fearful, we become possessive, greedy, domineering, and cruel. Ways of peace, balance, cooperation, and mutuality become obscured by our lack of faith to live in oneness. Instead of living from the power of spiritual truth, when we're out of integrity, we strive to live by exerting power over others, over those that we see as threats to our ambitions and well-being. Our vision becomes myopic instead of inclusive, and our minds become poisoned with the perception of limitation. This is not the way of truth. 
This is the way of living backwards. This is the way of evil. True happiness and security are gained by living rightly. Again, this pertains to both the universal as well as to the particular. Universally, many religious <clears throat> declare divine oneness. Individually, you and I espouse to divine oneness. We say so every time we give voice to our statement of faith. And we may even believe it. The proof of a belief lies in whether or not it is put into practice. This is the real test. There is only one presence and one power active in the universe and in my life. God, the good omnipotence. Is this true for you? Is this the basis for every choice you make? Um, is this the guiding foundation of how you live your life? Is this the basis of your financial decisions? Is this the truth behind how you move through physical and emotional stress? Is this the center of all your relationships? From time to time, I have to answer for myself, no. And yet there are those moments, those moments of clarity and remembrance that I come back to myself and I can answer these questions with yes, but it's inconsistent. To live a life bound to the idea of one presence and one power is to live in faith. Living faithfully requires surrender. And surrender isn't to say that we live powerlessly or that we take a stance of giving up. Rather, it means taking a position of extreme power, of radical power. It means overcoming and taking dominion of our own minds and expressing the full, put, the full potency of our spiritual attributes. It means extinguishing fears of not enoughness and embracing the fullness of abundance for all. It means making a shift from me to we. It means adopting attitudes orienting, oriented to both and rather than either or. It is no less than transformation from a world view to a spiritual view. And this transformation doesn't happen all at once. However, transformation is doable. Transformation is not a lofty idea that is unattainable. It's not a goal that can never be reached. It is achieved one decision at a time, one shift at a time, and one action at a time. It is in every one of us, everyone, to realize transformation. Our continuing challenge is to know the truth of our oneness in the midst of circumstances that would insist otherwise. There are many who live in ignorance of separation and the darkness of greed and power over, not only in the world, but parts within themselves as well. And as our daily word spoke today, it is our task to bring the light of truth to every dark corner of oppression and fear. For it is only in the light that we can see clearly and only in the light that we find liberation. And so it is ours to do, our task to do, our job to do is to nourish that light is to feed that light, to expand that light, and to shine it wherever we are. To nurture, to expand, to feed this beautiful light within ourselves requires daily mindful prayer and meditation in alignment to the truth that is within ourselves. And so right now, I'm going to take some time to, um, to 
create that alignment, that realignment through our meditation today. I think that it's, well, it's, it's just helpful for me personally, and I, I offer it to you just to close my eyes. I'm easily distracted, especially through my senses. And so closing my eyes allows me to reorient myself from the outside world to the inside world. And I offer that uh, to you right now. And as you make that shift, and as you allow yourselves to go inside, I would ask you to take a few deep breaths and to uh, just relax, to let it happen. Uh, meditation is not something to strive to achieve as a goal, but it is a, an attitude of mind in which to rest. And so I ask you to rest in that attitude of mind, soul, and spirit now. And to just take a moment or two to find the sweet spot of that rest within you. The one presence and power, active, animated in the universe is the same animating feature of our own lives. That we are separate from that which we call God. We are immersed, ennobled, and and perfectly united at a spiritual level to this presence and power. So much so that we say that we are the sons and daughters of this presence and power, that God is our source, that I am made in the image, the likeness of that which we call God. And so I invite you to truly uh, sit with that idea in this moment. That I am made in the image and likeness of God. I have come forth out of God to be God, individualized as a personality in the world. that within my attainable sphere is the fruition of all that of all the attributes that we ascribe to the divine that within my spirit experience of life i am strong i am wise I am powerful. I am energetic. I am peace, harmony, wholeness. That within my spiritual structure, I am all that is God on a different scale. And it's through spiritual practice that I expand my scale of oneness, of awareness of my oneness with God, with that which I know and experience to be God. But I am the presence, the power, the light and the love that is God. It is my joy to extend and express my light, my love, my presence 
the divinity of who I am to a very thirsty and hungry world. And so now in meditation, get a sense of yourself as the presence and power, the light and love that is God, that is you. Connect with it. Let it be real in you. See its realness. And for the next few moments in silence, I invite you to extend this beautiful divine power that is you in any direction that calls to you, whether to another person, a situation, a world circumstance, a community concern, to allow waves and waves of blessing to extend from your core, from your core spirit to the world as blessing. May each blessing from my heart be a beam of sparkling light shooting out from the depths of my soul to every dark and wanting corner of the world, of my life, of my community of my own mind. May this blessing transform me as well as others. May it be a testimony and a testament that God is good all the time. And so it is. Amen. Till the wind stops blowing
you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Patty, for such an enlightening message. And Matt and Becky for such awesome, inspiring music. It's been a great morning. And I hope someday everyone will be free. So now is the time for our love offering. Uh, we'll start with our statement, offertory statement. Divine love flowing as me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. So you can send your tithe into GiveLify or PayPal online. You can drop it in the mail, or you can swing by the church and drop it in the mailbox. We appreciate each and every one of you, and we're grateful for your support. And now I'd like to read a St. Patrick's prayer. I rise today with God's strength, God's, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look ahead, and God's ear to hear, God's word to speak, and God's hand to defend me and others, God's shield to protect myself and others. And St. Patrick said, be still, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still and be. Amen. And so it is. Thank you so much for today. Thank you, Lee. I appreciate that. Um, and one of the things that I would like to do uh, as a closing remark is... Every week, uh, we are blessed by the words of Diane Keyes, uh, who writes a little uh, introduction to what the service will be, and it's posted on our website. And I was especially moved by the one for uh, today, for this service, and I'd like to read it uh, as, um, as a closing remark. So, in our oneness with God, we find gifts of love. We see the value of divine order and balance in this universe and in ourselves. We give thanks for the ability to see and appreciate the beauty that surrounds us, the beauty in others and the beauty in ourselves. We give thanks for the ability to hear the sounds of life, music, laughter, and the gentle whispers of divine guidance, for we are never alone. We give thanks for the ability to speak and write loving words of divine wisdom and grace. We give thanks for Christ's love that fills our hearts, overflows, and reaches out to others. We give thanks for that power and presence, that one power and one presence that heals us and releases from us anything less than wholeness and vitality. We know with steadfast certainty that this power and presence is the source of our prosperity, taking care of all our needs, desires, obligations, and responsibilities. And so let us join together in this moment and throughout the day with the affirmation of our awareness of this power and presence in our lives. And may this power and present awareness lead us to the achievement of wholeness and fulfillment. And so it is. And so Matt and Becky, if you would sing us out with our peace song, that would be fabulous. <laughs>
let's um, let's pray ourselves out with the uh, prayer of protection and also the statement of being that the light of God surrounds us, that we are the light. The love of God enfolds us, enfolds us. We are the love that is God. The power of God protects us. We are the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. We are that presence. And wherever we are, God is. And in that presence, all is well. Have a wonderful day. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Um, blessings. And um, thank you for joining us today. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Patty. Thanks, Patty. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you.